A very good evening to you from wherever you're watching us from this evening, the first day of September. You have been appraised of today's top stories by Jesse Rogers. It's time for part two of the Supreme Petition. Remember, we started earlier on at 8 p.m., went through the hour, and this part, we go through the second half with my guest. But before that, part one, I took you through IEBC's response to the petition, that consolidated petition. Now, I want to take you to the president-elect and deputy president-elect, William Ruto, and Rigadi Gashagwa, respectively. They had their day in court, and this is what their lawyers said, beginning with senior counsel and and the lead counsel for his defense team, that is Fred Ngati. And when he appeared before the judges in his opening remarks, talked about the unprecedented nature of this particular petition that so initially eight petition, nine petitions actually filed. Two of them were struck out, remaining with seven, and saying this could in future uh, literally opened room for uh, even hundreds of more petitions going forward. He underscored that voting indeed took place everywhere in the Republic and that Kenyans expressed and exercised their uh, sovereign will even in the places and areas where other elections were postponed, the presidential one still took place. And that petitions mutated is another submission he made that in the original format then uh, there was a few uh, several changes here and there and urged the judges to focus on article 140 of the constitution in essence to focus on whether uh, on the validity of this election and not the numerous other issues uh, that in his view mutated the uh, life and fashion and form if you like of this petition and then he gave the example of the Ghanaian uh, presidential election petition which happened uh, last year and he talked about that in that petition substantive truth of the election is what the Supreme Court in Ghana sought asking and seeking that the Supreme Court of Kenya also focus on what is the substantive truth in this particular election petition and do so with what he described as finality and stability as the Supreme Court in Ghana did. Then he talked about order sought will take country to what he described as a constitutional crisis. Ngatia, senior counsel, petitioner will not participate in election uh, if it's presided by the chairman. That's what he was talking about, saying that then that is part of what would lead into a constitutional crisis, arguing that uh, then um, Uhuru does not have power to appoint another and that the petitioner has also made it clear that he'd want the vice chair, Charera, to preside over that election. Let's go to the next uh, council that we saw representing Ruta today, Katwa Kigen. And he talked about their, that they had agents around the country and that the physical form 34 A's from the polling stations have not yet been contested, that there is no evidence contesting what came from the polling stations. He talked about Arnold Ocheng who saw an affidavit and he argued that um, Mr. Odinga, Ocheng Odinga was not an agent at any point and yet uh, whilst he swears this affidavit and talks about and brings all of these results for him, he doesn't have bring a certification from the actual agents who provided him with the said uh, forms. He also accuses um, uh, Odinga, the Arnold Ocheng, of falsifying those affidavits. And then in terms of technology, he argued that in Odinga 2013, the Supreme Court opined, what if technology failed? Would this then mean uh, that the election is nullified? Would it impeach the election? And said that technology is there, yes, but there's a vast part of the election that is manual and that we should not forget, he urged the Supreme Court, that you still have to consider what happened at the 46,229 polling stations around the country. Um, then he also impeached and had uh, critiqued the Gizongo logs of 2014, or rather the, uh, the Gizongo logs, I beg your pardon, in this election saying they're from 2017 and talking about that after those fell through with uh, Gizongo having to file a subsequent um, affidavit uh, on the same, then just as Nyangaya jumps on with the new logs, he's an extension and a surrogate is how uh, Katwa Kigen described uh, the morphing of this particular matter and how those affidavits have been sworn. He also said 50% plus one um, was met and in fact invited the judges to what he described as exercise your capacity to be annoyed at the matter in which and the issues raised in the court. Next is Muthomi. Uh, very quickly he talked about 
fiction in this case that the case and the matter before uh, the Supreme Court of Kenya is largely fiction he talked about tragic comedy a tragedy and comedy in a mix and also was talking about that in this, in essence the accusation is that uh, Rail, uh, that is William Ruto was able according to the petitioners uh, be able to spear, tally or rather change intercept 11,000 forms in eight minutes 11,000 forms in eight minutes he was saying that's an absurdity it's a spurious accusation and that was Mudomi Njuki then we had uh, not Mudomi Njuki I beg your pardon that's the governor uh, but uh, Hyankolu. then you had Melissa as well uh, for the de uh, for the substantive current deputy president and president elect uh, melissa ngania also appearing there and reminding the court that in terms of the issue of agents and their importance and that then um Jokindongo in 2017 decision spoke to the importance of that in her dissenti dissenting decisions and that petitioners did not discharge their mandate is what she argued as she pleaded that the court dismissed the petition before them then there's Professor Kithure Kindiki also for the Deputy President. And here he says that on that, uh, what he described as a mob attacking the bombers of Kenya on the 15th of August where we saw uh, chaos erupt at the National Tallying Center. He argued it was an attempt to subvert the will of the people, an attempt to constitute a government unconstitutionally, and get this, an attempted but failed coup d'etat is what he said were also acts of treason. The polling station is a true locus standi where you get to tell the will of the people what can dick his submissions. IEBC conducted the election in accordance to the law and he asked that they strike out all the petitions including the submissions of the AG. Let's move on to the next council. Kiragu Kimani also appearing for the president-elect William Ruto. It has it been demonstrated that the election was conducted so badly? He maintained that the burden of proof lies with the petitioners, that if they raise issues, then they must prove. He who alleges must prove is what uh, counsel was submitting. And talks about also the panel beating of the petition, the point of mutating that was earlier raised by one of his colleagues during their submissions um, at the Supreme Court. Petitions have not demonstrated any irregularities and illegalities. This was according to Kimani. Then there was Kyoko Kilukumi. And Kyoko Kilukumi spoke largely about that NSAC, the National Security Advisory Committee. And this is what he said that according to his client, that's President elect William Ruto, NSAC has not sat or discussed anything to do with elections for five years, and especially with the independence of the IEBC. That NSAC has not been asked to deal uh, with the IEBC at any time. Ruto interf uh, interference calculated is what, according to him, his client Ruto says that the interference was calculated and designed to intimidate IEBC to influence the election was the submission in court. He says also that affidavits by NSAC prov provoked by Chebukati, that this was an attempted wi uh, way to subvert the will of the people. He says that NSAC was going to discuss security matters. He was asking that question and pointing to what he saw as a curious uh, timing an hour to the announcement of the election at the Bomas of Kenya. Four commissioners' elections went well, but they now can't own the results. It's another issue he raised that in their own words, they'd said all had gone well up to the point the result was being raised. And also raised the clips where part of the speech of the four commissioners and Raila Odinga appeared to be march word for word. According to Kyoko Kilukumiya, one of the questions that was asked by the judges, when did the rain start beating IEBC? How did they get so dysfunctional? He sought to answer that and say the split in IEBC was caused by the National Security Advisory Committee. That's what he claimed in court. The four commissioners uh, will go down in the history of Kenya as seeking nullification of an exercise they oversaw was his submission. And before I wind up, uh, there's also, he talked about that the position of the commission 
is that of midwifing, IEBC, and not to tamper with the will of the people. It cannot be said that it's the commissioners that make that decision. He then later on gave an example around that Solomonic uh, wisdom and the story of the child who has to be split into two, talking about that in this in instance, victory belongs to Ruto and it should be granted to him. In closing, uh, Fred Ngatia's senior counsel went back uh, on stage or on the floor uh, in the open court to close by saying that do not disturb this election and the victory. He also said special group of people denied to vote this theory of 500,000 500, people, I beg your pardon, that were denied to vote, not a single one. He was raising an issue raised by one of the petitioners, not a single one of those purported people in his view have filed an affidavit. How long will we allow political class to perpetuate self-interest is another issue he spoke about. And as I bring this to an end, uh, Fran Gatia, senior counsel, lead for the Ruto team. Voters exercise their right, hold them to covenant, make, and they made a choice that should not be disregarded. So we have that. Let's now head back to our panel this evening. I have with me on set uh, three advocates, Dr. Duncan Ojuang. I also have Dr. Maxwell uh, Miawa and Amros Weda, all advocates, learned friends. I will join this learned circle. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with us. I know it's been a long day of following the events of the Supreme Court, but this is an important one for the country. So Weda has promised I will come to you. I don't know whether you want to respond to some of what had been said earlier before we get into the issues now with context for the person yes. who had not been watching. Yes, thank you, Arba. Uh, you've done very well. When we finished, uh, when uh, my learned friend made some comments about Chebukati and what the Supreme Court can do, and he was saying that the Supreme Court can declare that uh, Chebukati step aside and all these things, uh, I cringed. I feel sad for some of us who went to Nyati House for the very freedoms that some of these people enjoy. You feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? It is sad for an advocate to advocate for anybody to be found culpable without due process. Without the allegations being put before you, given an opportunity to be heard, accusations being put you are given an accusation, uh, an opportunity to be heard, and then a decision is made. So that if you have a problem with Chebukati that he uh, breached the constitution, you have to say you did one, two, three. What do you say? Then he answers and a decision is made. And then you do not take away anybody's right to access the so Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Mm. So if you are in the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court declares we think Chebukati made uh, breached the constitution, where else does he go? That's why we start in the subordinate court, so that you go to the high court. From the high court, you go to the court of appeal. From there, you go to the Supreme Court. Now, my brother is suggesting that we condemn people and had, we condemn them at the highest court in the land. Thereafter, I don't know whether they appeal in heaven or in hell. Such kind of suggestions <laughs> are very sad, especially today it is Chebukati. Tomorrow, you are also qualified to be chairman IBC. And somebody else will say, yeah, we have already set a president. And then, so that is the part I wanted to say. If anybody thinks Chabukati made it a mistake mm -hmm. and he should not hold office, there is a set procedure in the Constitution. You follow it. But it's not open for the Supreme Court. Yep. As an aside, in a presidential petition, to then go and say, I look at Meyawa, Meyawa's head is uh, not big enough, he should not sit here. I look at that kind of young, it's too dark, it's you know, sit here. That is <laughs> not the business of the Court of Appeal, of the Supreme Court. But we Second, wish to see what they find, because this is still open. Now, you, you cannot find, make a finding when it is not before you. It wasn't a subject. It's not a subject. It has to be before you, and the other fellow has to be asked, mm. respond. So, if you, Chebukati has to be a respondent. Chebukati as Chebukati. He is. No, um, he's, he's a respondent as, but IEBC. Me, as IEBC. Uh, in his work, not, not in his conduct. All right. And if you are questioning his conduct, there's a process. Secondly, there's this question of uh, collegiate nature of the IEBC. Now, 
if you read the constitution and the, the acts election is one of the functions of the IABC but it's a special process which has been removed and has been placed in the hands of a returning officer all the powers have been vested in the hands of a returning officer to the extent that the constitution says that for purposes of presidential election the chairman of the IABC shall be the returning officer Meaning in other elections, other stages, the, please listen. We shall declare the results. No, 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 no. There is nothing in the constitution well, that says please. that the chair is the, is the, is the, the national return. Please don't, don't, don't make statements that exist. will embarrass you. It doesn't exist anywhere. It says shall declare the results, does, which is the role of a returning officer. Can I I let, let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. The constitution says, for purposes of presidential election, the chair of IBC shall be the returning officer. That's wrong. Let, let me finish. Okay. Let him finish then. then, that means there are other returning officers. And we have seen in our elections, the returning officer is in charge. He declares election. He can't even exclude people from the polling stations. He is the one whose word is final. Final until overturned by the court. We have had instances. We, I think there was a, one of the uh, senatorial elections, I think, in either Nyandarwa or, 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 or one of these um, places where the returning officer declared the wrong person as the winner. Mm -hmm. It was a mistake. And the same returning officer went to court and said, I made a mistake. But to the extent that he has already declared and issued a certificate, he himself cannot change. Okay. That's the way the law is. All right. So, saying that uh, uh, this one, the, the collegiate, if it was collegiate, people would vote. But the I think this is Ruto who has won. I think it is Raila who has won. How many of us? Raila has it. No, However, no, no. the judges today, and I bring this to you, Miao, as you uh, take to the point you wanted to yes, make mm -hmm. earlier, is that the judges, even in their questions to the parties today, the respondents mm -hmm. was, then what is the role of these other commissioners? Yeah. If then all of this power is vested on Chabukati? Um... Yes, as I respond to that uh, question, I think uh, my learned senior has raised two critical uh, issues here. One, what is the, what is the exact constitutional breaches that uh, perhaps Chebukati could have committed and how ought the court to deal with them? And then the question of who is the returning officer when it comes to presidential elections. The constitution, to be clear, does not state anywhere that there is a returning officer for presidential elections. If you look at Article 138.3c, it talks about the role of the commission in verifying and telling the results. Mm -hmm. Article 138.10 talks about the chair of the IEBC to announce the results. Mm -hmm. Now, then there's the Elections Act. What my senior is talking about is Regulation 87 that now christens the chair of the IEBC as the uh, returning officer for presidential elections. It's not in the Constitution. Now, going back to the minor care decision, minor care decision, a court of appeal decision, mm. that stated there is no such a thing as a returning officer when it comes to presidential elections. In fact, the minor care decision was very particular and specific that the chair cannot arrogate himself such a power, such an authority, and the chair is not an authority unto himself to lord over these other ones. The commission, it is the role of the commission to do the verification and, and, and the telling of the result. Then the chair's role and duty is only the, the announcement. Now, the question that is before the Supreme Court is a constitutional question. And that's why I, I fault these lawyers. There has been too much focus about numbers and not the integrity. So we talk about the quantitative question as opposed to the qualitative question. Now... Uh, when it comes to the qualitative question, and the point I want to make is this. How is it that we are supposed to uh, uh, rationalize Regulation 87 vis-a-vis -vis the constitutional provisions? Okay? So in here, you are interpreting a regulation, not even a, a legislation. Mm -hmm. Something that is very, very minor. And remember, the Court of Appeal has already said there is no such a thing as a returning officer when it comes to presidential elections. This is very clear in but the Karori law. But Karori of IEBC, in his submission, said the Supreme Court of 2013 and 2017 talked mm -hmm. about both a presidential returning officer and a national returning officer. Now. And that's what guided him in gazetting himself as such. In the 2013 election, 
and both in the 2017 election, that question was not in dispute. It was not in dispute then. It is in dispute now. But that now, then is the law as for now. It is not the law because it was not a specific question that was addressed to the Supreme Court. Okay? They, they happened to have called uh, the, the, the chairman of IEBC a returning officer without giving themselves a clear, you know, a clear analysis. Here, the question is before them. Remember, when you talk about the, supreme, uh, the Constitution, it is supreme. A regulation cannot trump a provision of the Constitution. In fact, a regulation or a, 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 a subsidiary legislation is so inferior, okay, that it cannot trump the language of the Constitution. Here we are talking about a court of appeal decision that has not been challenged. It's called the minor care decision. And it is clear that there is no such a thing as a national uh, a returning officer. Now, if there is an interpretation that the Supreme Court recognizes, you know, there's a which way is which higher than the court of appeal? Recognition or calling somebody by the name when that has not been made a subject of discussion. This was not <coughs> a question in 2013. But it's also not a question in this petition. It is. Actually, that's what we are saying. The it nine is. issues? It's Which one? one? It's, it's one of the issues. And it, this is it's how it arises. One of the issues, boy. We is, have nine this issues. Is, this is how it arises, mm -hmm. uh, if you give me more leverage. You want to sp speak the whole night, and uh, you are oh, being told and, by and a non lawyer is not the issue, and now you are pontificating. But I think we should focus on the law. You know, the political law? ad hominem okay. statements may not Tell be us which issue. Right. The, this is how it arises. Yes. The question before the Supreme Court is Was the result, uh, the process of announcement of results followed as provided in the Constitution? Okay? Mm -hmm. Chebukati rises and says, I am the national returning officer. I am the hard one who has the final word as to what to announce and tell the country. The commissioners are say, telling him, no, you have a role that comes at the tail end. The process begins with verification and tallying. That's a constitutional process. So therefore, when you arrogate yourself the position of a, a re national returning officer, that does not exist in law. This is a wrong process, it's a wrong procedure. Now, let me go to the question of um, the constitutional breaches and whether Chebukati can be told to step aside and not supervise or superintend a fresh elections if they are called. My colleague forgets, and he has very short memory, that the High Court has told governors not to step into office. And remember, these are constitutional office holders, elected into office, discharging constitutional duties. And this is a decision by Justice Mumbingugu. It has been, it was, it was first made in the case of uh, uh, Waititu, in the case of uh, uh, Sonko, the former governor of Nairobi. And they were barred from accessing office. The Supreme Court can do the same and follow that president. We are not saying that the Supreme Court is removing anybody from office. Removal from office is a different and a distinct constitutional process that is so different from the court making a pronouncement that, right. look, mm -hmm. there is a constitutional breach, purported constitutional breach. And by the way, remember, it's one of the prayers in the Azimio petition is that they find uh, a Chebukati a liable for having committed a constitutional breach. It's an express prayer. Mm. Probably you can look at it. Once it's a prayer, it is now subject of determination before the court. So it's one of the issues that the court has to determine. And remember, uh, they were, that was one of the questions that was being asked uh, by Justice Njokindungu and uh, the Deputy Chief Justice. Look, if we are to uh, uh, tell Chebukati not to supervise this election, what becomes of the removal process, the constitutionally recognized removal process? Mm -hmm. So it is not right. And we can point at some of the constitutional breaches. As Mio right. says, mm -hmm. the first thing, attempt to subvert the will of the people, attempt to subvert the constitution, <laughs> and failing to follow the dictates, express dictates of Article 133 in terms of the process of announcement of results. Process is so important. It is the qualitative process, it's a constitutional right. threshold than a quantitative process that these people focus on. Okay. I, I want to I bring guess. this to Ojuang. And a question that was posed today is why couldn't Chabukati wait one more day before announcing the results and perhaps engage the commissioners? The seven days were lapsing um, on the 16th. Why have it on the 15th? Yeah, you know, within those seven days, uh, remember even the report of the national security was that there was anxiety uh, though Chibukati believe and uh, this point that they were demanding for moderation of results but on their own defense they are saying they'd come because they became anxious on behalf of Kenyans 
who had been waiting for the results for five days mm -hmm. from Bomas. And uh, right there, you can imagine if Chebukati waited for another day, because you announce the result when they are ready. You, you announce the results. The results being ready is what guides you. It is not the recipients. You don't leave the results and say, let me check whether, 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 whether Ruto is up, whether, whether Martha Karua will take these results, whether Nani will, will run to suicidal thoughts. It is the preparation and the final results that dictates. So if they are done and he has the results, uh, can you imagine <coughs> if he had postponed the argument will have been what did he do within those 24 hours if they were ready then why did you wait you are doctoring them but even so so he can announce within seven days and remember this word the tail end uh with the pressure with the media there with the with the international community actually seated uh but of course you you know the uh the the, the tension the visitation, the 4 a.m. visitation had become so intense and uh, there is a feed of it, there is confirmation from those who visited. Uh, remember to you corrected that it wasn't f three, it was four. And then there is the national intelligence uh, or the, the national security who, say, who also visited him. So you can see why he had to discharge of his duty. Was Chebukati supposed to negotiate with the dissenting commissioners as time ran out because that seems to have been the plan that if we can stall him and have him to fail to answer to 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 declare those results within the seven days then uh we can say there's a constitutional crisis because nobody has been declared what do we do with this election do we go back and all that mm -hmm. so, so think of the uh, the, the, the other commissioners have left. They're in Serena. Do you negotiate with them forever okay. about the results? But even, even, even more important, remember it was easily put uh, that the DNA of these elections are in the polling stations and in Form 34A. That is the umbilical code. If you want to trace this election and you want to know who won or what this election is about, you go not to Bomas, unfortunately. You go not to Chebukati, though others think that's what they should do. You go and you tally the original form 34S. And that there is the crux of the matter that the DNA of the election is the will of the people were expressed in the polling station. There is no dispute, as, as Professor Gidu started by saying, that everybody have accepted the minor key to be the Bible, mm. that elections are over the polling station. Okay. So what Dr. Miawa is talking about, uh, which is actually a lynch mob, uh, going after Chebukati, uh, after he has discharged this duty, in the midst of the greatest tension, remember what he's talking about in 2017 the qualitative test the server could not be open right now they were walking in the server the, the last time in 2017 there was announcement before the year chebukati received all the original form 34a yeah it was based on provisional results right now it was on their face for four days it was in court before they were even called last time uh, there were the, the, the kids' kit and the identification fail. This time you had the statistic, it was up to 90 something percent. 99. So, 99. I think the one council put it aptly. There is nothing wrong with Chebukati, but there is everything wrong with the politics that is uh, bringing people like Chebukati to mediate. And this constitution came to develop political hygiene but seems like uh, this, uh, the, the, the political hygiene have not really come okay. into to bear. Alright, whether there's still that question still on why then the 27 remaining constituencies which was an issue raised in the petitions um, were not announced because granted there was that scaffold initially but he came back and did announce president-elect but preceding that why couldn't he have 
then announce the 27 first? Yeah, I, I think um, the, 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 the best answer generally would come from uh, Chebukati himself and the commissioners. Mm. As we would speculate. Should how we do, have? How do we speculate? Mm -hmm. Look at it that they were announcing these things nicely. All of them together, love with one another, moving very well, doing a good job. Then somewhere around noon, they even said, no, 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 we are giving you results at 2. I remember I was very keen, at 2 o'clock. It seems, this is speculation, that between noon and 2, some revelation came amongst them or amongst some of the commissioners. So that within this, this period, then uh, the results were, the, the announcement of the results were pushed to 3. I suspect that is the time when the disagreements culminated in a way that some people found themselves in Serena, some remained, some people tried to beat one another. At that point, those who went to Serena would give us an inkling. We could look at it. They were saying, the results is announcing, okay, are uh, wrong results. Meaning they had agreed and they knew that it was making they some knew the results. They knew the results. And they were not happy with it. So the circumstances that they were not announced, I don't know. But the commissioners knew. And some of them were not happy with how it turned out. I think the four commissioners were not happy that maybe uh, some numbers were left out or Horobraila wasn't announced or whatever. They would tell us from their affidavits, we can see that they, they had a lot of games. Games all over. Some people even visited at night. 3 a.m. 4 a.m. and they are correcting themselves. It was not 3 a.m. It was not 4 a.m. It appears that those who were acting on behalf of uh, Azimio had access to these commissioners. Even had access to the chair. Because 4 a.m. they were visiting the chair and uh, calling each other Oksuniyas. So they, 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 why they were visiting each other, I really don't understand. They will need to tell us and we'll need to write a book on it so that we keep in the Kenya National Archives. Honorable Toji will write, other people will write. But it, from what I can deduce, they didn't mean well for this country. That's why there was need to visit each other. And there was need for some people to run away, to go and say 0.001% is 140,000 votes. So looking at it overall, eh? But what we heard from um, the senior counsel, that's George Oraro, for yes. the Attorney General, in, to the extent of the NSAC visit, is that the showing of the results on the screens had yes. stopped at the bombers. And still yeah. it's a question that has been asked by the judges. Why yeah. did that stop? Because then easily everyone would have followed that. So it's one of those things that um, they're arguing we were coming to simply check because there's anxiety. This has stopped. And the other, those are the submissions Sophie, we had. Those are submissions. But let me tell you, the presidency is not a, a, a Nasari school issue. It is cake, caviar, dollars. People kill one another for it. Nations have fought over it. So these people who are just concerned, why are you not announcing yet? They have still have seven days. They should have waited until 4 p.m. the last day. Then they say, my brother, you'll cause a constitutional crisis. What's the problem? Why were they in a hurry? We have not heard from the deputy president's side why he was not jostling, why he didn't have wind in his stomach, why he's not sending people like Ojuang here to go and check. So these people, they can come and tell us they were concerned. But I think 4 a.m. is too early to visit out of concern. At night, Kenyans were asleep. <laughs> the only early riser. So the correct position is this. In my view, not out there. Some people are trying to uh, influence the outcome. The outcome that was there was not what they liked, and they wanted to push for it. Okay. And somehow some people stood their ground, some people walked out. Miara, has Meow. the sorry um just call him miara because daktari <laughs> has the burden of proof been discharged by the petitioners because that's what we had from ruto's team saying that that's where the burden rests in mm -hmm. their view it has not been discharged and they maintain up to now no contestation has been raised on the physical form 34a at the polling station now um in law uh, because here we should be speaking purely law mm -hmm and not uh, political statements. Mm. Uh, 
And uh, the law uh, requires two standards. There is the burden <coughs> of proof and then the standard of proof. Now, standard of proof and burden of proof, what, what, uh, in relation to what, what allegation? Um, if I was to look at, uh, of course, the burden means that it's the petitioners. When you allege, for instance, when they allege staging, they have to prove that staging by availing evidence. When they allege manipulation, either at whatever level, and most particularly in this particular case, they, had, um, they have alleged manipulation at the transmission level. Mm -hmm. Remember, the allegation is that um, once the results have been fed into the KM's kit, on their way, they're intercepted, they are doctored, and then they are dumped. That's what they call staging in, a, mm. in a, an IT language. Now, the burden is on them to, to, uh, to prove that. They have our next several affidavits. Eh? One of them is by Arnold Oginga. And actually, when I was on my way here, I had a chance and an opportunity to read it. You know, people can make political statements and uh, roadside declarations, but the Supreme Court is going to have a time and a chance to look at that evidence. Okay? If Arnold Oginga alleges, you know, uh, or an, I, I, an IT, IT technocrat says this is the proof of, of, of staging. Okay? None of us has gone into the very details of uh, all these allegations. The Supreme Court had a chance. In 2013, I had a chance, by the way, because I was working at the Supreme Court as a law clerk uh, stationed in the office of the Chief Justice. And we had a chance to do a scrutiny, just like the Supreme Court has had a chance to do it this time round. And you, one could uh, see uh, quite a number of irregularities there is going to be a report that comes before the court, okay? So the petitioners will point them to where those uh, 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 errors and manipulations are. In terms of standard of proof, okay? In terms of standard of proof, of course, I heard the lawyer saying that they haven't made the standard of proof. The standard of proof has got two prongs. Here we're still speaking law. Eh? The first is that the, law, the election was not conducted in a, substantially conducted in accordance with the law or the constitution, or that there were massive irregularities that could affect the result or the outcome. Now, in other jurisdictions, in other countries, one has to prove the two jointly. In this jurisdiction, you can disjunct them. By disjuncture, I mean that if you can prove breach of the law, that's the qualitative aspect, okay? Breach of the law and the constitution. You do not need to go into irregularities, okay? Because the, Supre the Supreme Court, I mean, the, the constitution is supreme. Now, that's why when we are, um, uh, the people are attacking Chebukati, and they're attacking, are impeaching, particularly his conduct. Remember, election is a process. There's the voting process, there's the counting, the, tr uh, the transmission, and then the final declaration when it comes to the presidential one. Even if one was to attack particularly one step, which is the result declaration process, okay, you would attach it on the basis of a constitutional standard. That is the qualitative aspect, okay? Is the declaration, has the declaration conformed to the law? Now, I want to take you back in history. At least from 2007, I voted. In 2002, I was young. I was still um, just finishing high school. In 2002, Results could be known publicly from each and every constituency, from Nyando, where I come from, from by midnight, and the whole country knew the, the winner. In 2007, the same, even though the contest was very, very narrow and fierce, we knew the results from each and every constituency. Mm. Same to 2013 and 2017, even if one was to question those results. That culture of telling the country what the results are, even before they are verified, okay? He created what in law we call a legitimate expectation. The right to a legitimate expectation has got several elements. Okay? One, it is either the law says this is how things shall be done. So it's a promise created by law or the constitution. It can also be created by conduct of a public officer. Okay? Based on that history. And this was det determined in the case, we are still, still speaking law, in the case of um, uh, the Communication Commission of Kenya versus Royal Media Services. Now, that culture of result announcement to the public created a legitimate expectation on all Kenyans, including the petitioners, Raila Odinga, Martha Karua, and others, that at least the public will be told results from each and every other constituency. But they were in the portal, is what IBC contends. Remember, remember, Raila Odinga says, the case of Raila Odinga says, what is in the top, top portal is not final. 
whatever is, uh, is, is final is the actual thing that has been very very untallied which is but my other question then to you maybe if you could get to that yeah. have you is the has have the petitioners talked to and poked holes to form 34 in the physical form yes uh, if one was keen enough go and read the affidavit of um, arnold oginga and celestine uh, anyango opio and this is what they have done remember for the izimio people their main contention their main problem is the result announcement process what was announced at the polling station and what has been carried in the portal and what was given to their agents okay they have given a breakdown their affidavits are long over 100 pages together with the next year they're extremely long mm -hmm. none of us has got a chance to sift through that 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 evidence but i'm saying the qualitative standard has not been met in the sense that Chebukati declared himself a law and with impunity against the wishes of Krigler that says be transparent, be open, tell the people, you know, don't create in terms of creating a political hygiene. If assuming even these 27 constituencies were not announced, how are the people supposed to know, even those people who had voted in those constituencies? It is not about the question of chaos, that chaos erupted, everyone ran away. And then they could not announce. Even okay. when he was announcing before he flashed that the results from his pocket, he could have said, "Okay, fine, I'm going to announce the results." But these are the results from the 27 constituents. He was sitting there next to Musali Mudabadi. He could have told the country, "This is the results from 27." If at all they were ready. And from my memory, results were only announced like six or seven of them from seven constituents. There were no others, really. I mean, let sure. us be truthful okay. here. All right. Mm. Yeah. No, it appears that. Uh, the process of telling uh, is a continuous process that begins at the polling stations. That is telling and counting. Get to the constituency. And that is the path. And then get to Bomas, where you saw uh, even Cherara severally appear on tele doing the same. Nyangaya doing the same. Mm. It is at the polling station, uh, probably before the aliens and monsters hijack the results according to uh, his alibi, because it's unexplainable how somebody can take a physical form, handwritten, change them, and then give them back to the same people, including their agents, and then send the same to the, to the, to the, to the portal, unless they are aliens or they are monsters in that local polling station like in my local polling station we actually were counting with the benefit of mother tongue because we were made of the same language that is where the telling began chebukati was not there cherara was not there nyangaya was not there but it was declared this is what raila has and this is what ruto has filled in form 34a taken a photo taken after the, the the signature now that is what came to bomas there is no magic in bomas but secondly uh the the affidavit is talking about is where oginga come and show that our agents gave me and the log of ibc uh, the, the, the diary shows that there was no agent from Azimio, from ODM, and even from UDA. So then, unless uh, Oginga was presiding or uh, participating in a Uganda election, those same polling stations, there was no even an agent. Be mm. Before you even dispute the numbers. But in his affidavit, he's saying, I received this from our agent. I mean, you know, we say in law that there is no perfect crime. Somehow you leave something that make it very easy to catch you. And that is what has happened. So, so, so it was brought, like there was one where an affidavit was sworn now by their agent, who said, this is not what I gave you. This is not the form I gave you. You sent me as an agent. Uh, you probably brought for me lunch and everything. But, and then at the end, I took a picture of Form 34A as a diligent agent, sent it to you. But now what I see in court that was, uh, that is Form 34A that I gave is not that form. 
that is by their own agent. I mean, the things that have happened from the night visitation, remember by the time Cherera is going to Serena with the, with the, with the other three commissioners, that was not the gazetted uh, tiling center. It is bombers. So, so you wonder, should Chebukati follow them to each and every home, to their home, to an gazetted place? How about the visitation? I mean, w the, the court asks a very fundamental question. When do things go south? In Cherera's own admission, we were doing very well until the last day. You cannot dispute the results you have not seen. They cannot be opaque while they are forcing you to walk away. It then become clear that the independence of the commission and you see they are conflating issue commission does not mean commissioners commissioners are part of the commission so there is the commissioners there is the chair who are too distinct because i you know even in terms of role is not just first among the equal he has special and additional qualification and that is why he can be returning officer by whatever name uh, the person who declared results is a returning officer in, 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 in simple word you can okay. call them either way so they leave the, the, the <coughs> gazetted place to a known place here Chebukati has been visited here and he cannot live here because there is danger everywhere he cannot even come to the hall because the other side is mounting and, and coming and throwing his chair and picking him okay. in the middle of the security. Right. What is he supposed to do? But uh, to, the, to the ultimately, I think the standard, because he's, he's, he's also not very clear. Uh, he's talking of qualitative standard. It is beyond uh, more likely probability, more probable than not beyond 50%. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not any error because that's what he seems to be misleading. I hope none of your students is watching this <laughs> painful thing because it's like an from. accident scene uh, that any error can lead to cancellation right. of, of election. Far okay, from let, it. Let me respond. Right, let, yes. Okay, let, let him respond can, briefly. What yeah. is he responding to? Uh, especially That's on the no question of standard, whether, standard of whether you're still No, we'll come to you. Weather has been quiet for some time, but weather, yeah. in fairness. Yes. Um, the voter suppression um, issue that has been raised yes. and whether the postponement uh, of elections led to the same yes. and also the disparity of where you're told there are more people that voted for president than other seats. And yes. I remember uh, Mahat uh, Council speaking to that and regarding the Martha Karua petition and saying that it was alleged 23,000 was the variance. However, from our numbers, 900 uh, were the stray uh, ballots. I also reminded the court that this county has two um, prisons um, and they only vote, of course, for the president. Uh, but looking at just because that argument as well came up last election, 2017, in the Supreme Court about that disproportionate that is more for president than uh, there is for other positions. Thank you. Voter suppression, I think uh, we are picking this from America, from Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are, uh, voter suppression, Trump, yeah, yeah. Uh, ours is still manual and uh, suppression must be deliberate attempts, not where you look at it and say uh, the ballot papers are mixed up. We cannot go on with elections today. We'll reorganize. It's unfortunate. It should not have happened. But if it happened, uh, if, uh, it disappoints both sides. Mm. There were people who were going to vote for the governor, but in favor of Honor Braila. There were people who were going for the governor in favor of Ruto. Mm. Both of them, somehow, you look at the mass of probability and uh, um, it falls. But you have to come in and demonstrate that because of this postponement, this percentage of voters could not turn up. And if they voted, they were mine. Remember, this thing is simple. Honorable Ruto is leading with 200,000 votes. Mm. All they have to show on their Zimiya side is that all these mistakes, if you Amount. add them, mm. it would be 250,000 votes. Therefore, we would have won. Going through other, other picking, like you'd pick... Uh, 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 a piece of air in the nose here, there, oh, standard of proof, burden of proof, all this proof. Those ones are Madogodanio <laughs> when you do not have real. Is that legal parlance? 
No, 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 that's not what you're saying. You are that, 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 KK language. What I'm saying is simple. The first thing you go for is to just say, look, they stole our votes. They stole them. This polling station, look, look, look. By now, it will, mm. all the media houses and the newspaper will be showing here. Here, in 207, when there was a dispute, it was very clear, Tarakaniti, Georgia, whatever. And you look and you say, tell us. But this other one, who oh, pick Chebukati, pick Serena, pick what? These are the things that we are saying, they are confusing our children and grandchildren. And the Bible says a good man lives and inherited with the children of his children. Mm -hmm. That is why when now some people go to, to, to Serena, some people visit each other at night to try to convolute things. We say, some of us say, no, that is wrong. What would have been, you would have said, okay, Chebukati, you have some results in your pocket. And are you unpicked? Okay, see you at the Supreme Court. And then when you go to the Supreme Court, you say, judge, look, these are the ones they announced. Now look at the results, look. Look at the forms you have. See here. See here. What is this? It would be clear. Even now, it is not clear. So mm. they are saying, we are looking at constitutional interpretation. You remove Chebukati and remove this and we win. That is not the basic standard. That is just speaking to the gallery to show they stole our elections. But figures would have been put to put in doubt the extra 200,000 votes. Or even to say, this whole election, it was so opaque that you can't say with certainty one that is was also the standard in 207 when people fought it was not clear it, okay this one this one this one this one and because of these issues that is why it was said this time the question of server some people are still sleeping when the server is closed now you upload them and say because say they have come in check take your form call your agent download now, it seems some people didn't do that. They are still arguing the old Saba, which is all right. But you tell Kenyans, you tell my grandchildren, you tell my children, these are the votes Chebukati stole from us. These votes cannot be explained. And then we say, wow. But for now, at the close of the uh, petition as submissions, mm -hmm. <coughs> we are still cherry picking. We are still hoping that in reply there will be issues. And that is where I say it is wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong. I, 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 I also voted for Baba, but this, mm -hmm. this, 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 <laughs> this <laughs> gerrymandering and sub rattling. You know, there are more votes. Say, where are they? So I you have really. since you voted for him? Oh, yeah, I did. But and I put on the, the Facebook, I said I voted for Baba. Like in Ikitu Sioni. Sioni Ikitu. But you're still seeing it. <laughs> even uh, seeing it, uh, even uh, when now uh, they can't explain the numbers. And the numbers <laughs> have been explained. I think one just needs to be more, a little bit more careful uh, when critiquing um, documents that are numbering thousands of pages. And uh, one needs to go deep down into the petition and see this. The affidavit of Celestine Anyango Pio actually <coughs> gives an account, a chronology of all these things, which figures stories. were added. Uh, they're not stories. I think as you had their own telling center, and, and uh, they downloaded those other forms. Where was that? And they have, I do not know. Uh, uh, but because uh, these things are in the affidavit, you can, you can go and confirm. So it shows how many additions and subtraction from from Raila, and they have been tabulated in those affidavits. I mean, with all due respect, let how us has go that read. not played out prominently in in, in this petition? Julie, that, Julie, that issue of submission yeah. prominently has to stick. Uh, no, you know, yesterday they had uh, very few hours, like every other advocate had like thirty thirty um, minutes each to submit. So what name do you do? What, what do you do? Name one polling station uh, where the discrepancy is so clear. What an advocate one. does is that you point the court to the affidavit and to the page, okay? So, for instance, one of the tabulations was how certain votes, particularly, let's say, from Kakamega, okay? What they would do is that they would re leave the, the total outcome of the vote, the polling station, intact. But where Raila scored more, they would minus 30-30. And it, was, it has consistently been shown in Kakamega County. Now, if assuming Kakamega County had about um, 5,000 polling stations... <laughs> 30 times 5,000, that's how many? <laughs> that is already enough to disqualify or to subtract certain <laughs> votes from Ruto to bring yeah. him below then should, the should 50 Should then have been where one. they focus more attention as to make then a strong case with proving yeah. Yeah. That, that has, that, that that has been done. Decisions. You know, the petition is broader and bigger. And the lawyers did this, uh, this work. 
by documenting and pointing the court to those affidavits. And remember, to you, this election, you, constitutional standard of accuracy. <laughs> when you're talking about a constitutional standard of accuracy, we are talking about numerical exactitude. This is a constitutional standard. All that the Azimio people had to show that even the 0.49 percent that you're saying, which is an equivalent of 1,400, was not attained. You need no less than 30 polling stations, by the way, to prove that Ruto did not get 50 percent. I one. hear you. Yes. All, all I want to ask is this: because we saw Kiam Tata when he contested the 50 percent plus one threshold, mm -hmm. he gave a presentation, blow by blow account of what he's talking about. Right mm -hmm. today. We saw the IEBC uh, Council Mahat again mm -hmm. take us through blow by blow because these numbers are important, as you're saying. Mm -hmm. And you're saying they're sufficient to overturn. So even if it was just that one ground, then shouldn't we have seen that kind of breakdown of these additions, subtractions, and how they're happening? Uh, at least you can put the blame on their lawyers, not me. But <laughs> 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 this is because we are now pointing out. So they are so they 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 watching. They are now watching. They are watching in their rejoinder tomorrow. In their response, they, today, they, will, they should come and say, "Look, in this section of the affidavit, in this page, in this attachment, that they can do tomorrow and tabulate." And of course, uh, mistakes are done. Eh? It should be placed where it is. But I strongly do believe, because I've read the petition, I've read all the affidavits of these respondents, and the tabulation is there. Okay? You need to have time to read these things. Eh? I you have. You cannot be a practicing lawyer in town here in court every day and uh, critique a report that you haven't read. Now, uh, to uh, uh, Dr. Ari's <laughs> question. You that. And yeah, our so time yeah. is running two, out. Let me yeah, just respond two to minutes his, out. Uh, yeah, two yeah. minutes to his. He said, uh, when my students are watching, his students are watching too. But let us tell those students, the standard of proof, of course, is lower than uh, beyond reasonable doubt and above uh, the balance of probability. Mm. It is lower than that of a criminal, uh, uh, criminal mm. law uh, standard. Mm. Now, that applies particularly when these questions of irregularities are going to be uh, uh, subject of determination before the court. The okay? In this particular case, if I was the Azimio lawyers, I would have focused on just slight and numerical uh, numbers, absolute numbers, mm -hmm. that disqualifies the root from 50% But you are. Pl pl you are plus a one. lawyer, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not in the petition. <laughs> Once you have done that, <laughs> you have discharged the burden. I mean, the standard of proof. It is as simple as that. I want us to focus on one thing before we wrap up. Literally one minute to wrap. So mm. take each one minute. U.S. Embassy issues security alert advising U.S. personnel against travel to Kisumu ahead of next Monday's Supreme Court uh, verdict. It's, mm. I'm bringing it to this show because it's related. It's the day, the yeah. deadline. They will announce uh, and the give verdict. the verdict then. Your yeah. thoughts on that a lot? Okay, uh, but just to... You uh, have one minute. Yeah, to remind my friend that yes. loving someone or a politician does not mean lying for them. And uh, the worst lie is the lie we tell ourselves. Because we, we all know what is uh, happening and what happened. That uh, uh, things that... We, we encourage each other to lower our expectations, especially for the Azimio supporters. But, uh, and I think this is part of helping Azimio supporters to lower their expectation. Uh, the embassy is uh, saying nobody should snap uh, if things don't go your way. If they go your way, fine. If they don't go your way, uh, don't, don't, don't snap. I just lower your expectation. And uh, to me, I think that is very important uh, uh, telltale because you see just like election nobody went to bombers not knowing who is the winner it was until the declaration is now when they apparently uh, got shocked even in this court court do not manufacture laws court cannot do what they are saying this thing will require a magician and it is which logic it's not math it's okay. not logical All right. and so people can tell where this thing is going but to me i encourage kenyans that you know it's not about raila versus ruto it's about our country we are the sovereign and uh, let us again understand that at the end of the day All those right. domestic role you are talking about accrediting observers is the role of a commission so meeting ambassadors and whatever cannot be domestic okay. there are some languages that have been misapplied yes. All right, well yes i can only say that the only europe in africa in kenya as kasumo 
so there should be no fear. Whatever considerations the Americans may have had, there should be no fear in Kisumu uh, and the uh, uh, western part of Kenya. It's a relatively sli uh, safe place. We, we, we behave well. The only possible outcomes will be two. Either the election of uh, the Deputy President Ruto will be sustained or a rerun will be ordered. Either way, Kenya will grow stronger. Okay. And mm. therefore, may God bless you. If we have a rerun, put your vote ready. If Baba Boy courts, we will push him to come and run. So you'll vote again the same way? Uh, now, the way they are, they are behaving and lying, uh, will have, they'll have to give me a confirmation that they'll not lie about the outcome of the election. One minute. Um, the, um, the advisory or the alert by the U.S. Embassy, it's very unfortunate. It's what I would call a tunnel vision of reality. We know how these ambassadors operate. At times, they are completely detached from reality. It's uh, unwarranted, it is bas it's baseless, and it's uh, actually an insult on the people of, uh, of, of Kisumu. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Dr. Duncan Ojuang, Maxwell Miyawa, Ambrose Weda, advocates with me here on our election center. That's a Supreme Petition show this evening. So today we heard from the respondents, that's IEBC and uh, the Ruto team. Now, several questions were put to them by the Supreme Court judges, but because they, had not, you know, they did not have enough time to reflect on these uh, questions and put together a response, they requested, uh, which was granted, that they do so tomorrow morning. So that is where that will begin tomorrow. Remember, then there's also the rebuttal. So the petitioners get a second chance to rebut, to respond to this uh, evidence that was given by the respondents. And then there's a scrutiny, and I see the report is out so again that will be in court and there will be submissions on the same but after all is said and done tomorrow is the conclusion of the supreme uh petition sorry the the show called the supreme petition the presidential election petition the judges will then retreat over the weekend a very short time they have and then on monday we will know which way uh the seven judge bench led by martha Comer, the president of the court will be making that decision here on ktn news from early morning tomorrow we have all those proceedings live for you so do join us then on behalf of the great team behind the scenes that makes and made this show possible we thank you for watching i'm sophia Wanuna. Have a good night and God bless.